Chapter 20, Maniac McGee. They brought out the knot and hung it from the flagpole. They brought out the official square wooden table for the challenger to stand on, and from the moment Maniac climbed up, you could tell the knot was in big trouble. To the ordinary person, Cobble's knot was about as friendly as a nest of yellow jackets. Besides the tangle itself, there were the withering of that first year when the knot hung outside and became hard as a rock. You could barely make out the individual strands. It was grimy, moldy, crusted over. Here and there, a loop struck out, struck out, maybe big enough to stick your pinky finger through. Pitiful testimony to the challengers who had tried and failed. And there stood Maniac, turning the knot, checking it out. Some say there was a faint grin on his face, kind of playful, as though the knot wasn't his enemy at all, but an old pal just playing a little trick on him. Others say his mouth was more grim than grin that his eyes lit up like flashballs because he knew he was finally facing a knot that would stand up and fight a worthy opponent. He lifted it up on his hands to feel the weight of it. He touched it here and touched it there gently and daintily. He scrapped a, a patch of crust off his fingernail. He laid his fingers on it and though feeling for a pulse. Only a few people were watching at first and half of them were Hex Angels, a roving tricycle gang of four and five year olds. Most of them had sneaker lace or yo-yo knots untied by Maniac, and they expected this would be only a couple of seconds longer. When the seconds became minutes, they started to get a little antsy, and before 10 minutes had passed, they were zooming in search of somebody to terrorize. The rest of the spectators watched Maniac poke and tug and pick at the knot. Never a big pull or yank, just his fingertips touching and grazing, pecking away like some little bird. What's he doing, someone said. That's taking so long. Is he going to do it or not? After an hour, except for a few more finger-sized loops, all Maniac to show for his trouble were the flakes of a, a knot crust that covered the table. He hadn't even found the end of the string yet, somebody grumbled. And somebody, and almost everybody, but Amanda took off. Maniac never noticed. She just went on working. By lunchtime, they were all back, and more kept coming. Not only kids, but grown-ups too. Black and white, because Cobbler's Corner was on Hector, and word was racing to their neighborhoods on both the east and the west sides of the streets. When people saw, they didn't believe. The knot had grown, swelled, and exploded. It was a frizzly globe. The newspaper the next day described it as a gigantic hairball. Now, except for the package, now for the packed in clump at the center, it was practically all loops. You could look through it and see Maniac calmly working on the other side. He found the end, somebody gasped, and the corner burst into applause. Meanwhile, inside, Cobble was selling pizza left and right, not to mention Zips, a two mills type of hoagie, steak sandwiches, and gallons of soda. Mr. Cobble himself came out to offer Maniac some pizza, which Maniac, of course, politely turned down. He did accept an orange soda, though, and then a little kid whose sneaker laces Maniac had untied many a time handed him a three-pack of Tasty Cake Butterstrap Crimplets. After push, pu polishing off the crimplets, Maniac did, some, did the same last thing nobody expected. He lay down and took a nap right there on the table, the knot hanging above him like a, hairy, like a small hairy planet, the mob buzzing all around him. Maniac knew, that the rest of, knew what the rest of them didn't. The hardest part was yet to come. He had to find the right routes to untangle the mess, or it would just close up again like a rock and probably stay that way forever. He would need the touch of a surgeon, the alertness of an owl, the cunning of three foxes, and the foresight of a grandmaster in chess. To accomplish that, he needed to clear his head, to flush away any distraction, especially the memory of butterscotch cripplets, which, he had, or which, he, which had already hooked him. In exactly 15 minutes, he woke up and started back in, like some fairy tale tailor. He threaded the end in the maze, dipping and doodling through the openings the way he swiggled a football through a defense. As the long August afternoon boiled along, the exploded knot hairball would cave in here, cave in there. It got lumpy, out of shape, saggy. The Times photographer made starbursts with his cameras. The people munched on Cobble's pizza and spilled across Hector from sidewalk to sidewalk and said, ooh and ah. And then around dinner time, a huge roar went up. A volcano of cheers. Cobble's knot was dead, undone, gone. It was nothing but a string. Mm,